Welcome to the Career Management Podcast for Black Women. Yes, this show is for you. I'm your host, Felicia Ann Rose Anuha, also known as the Trill MBA. Why am I the Trill MBA? Because I'm going to keep it true and real with you about what it takes to make it in the workplace. Every week, we're going to empower you with the tips, tricks, and tactics that you need, not just to survive at work, but to thrive at work. Whether you're aiming for that promotion or you really have some crazy workplace stuff going on, it's going to be okay. We've got you covered. Love our content? Subscribe, like, comment, and let us know what workplace dilemma you're going through. We want to go on this journey with you, and we want to see you win. That's why I started this show. Now, in today's episode, we are dropping gems to help you level up your career with confidence. Now, let's start the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Trill and VA show. I'm so glad you're joining us today. I have a pretty in-depth show today based on a listener letter I got. So the letter says, Dear Felicia, I'm a black woman working as a mid-level manager in a corporate setting. Recently, I've been passed over for promotions twice despite receiving positive performance reviews. My boss says I'm doing great work, but I keep getting the feedback that I need to be more visible. What does that even mean? How do I navigate this feedback without burning myself out or feeling like I have to do extra just to get the same recognition as my peers? Any advice on how to position myself better for future opportunities? Sincerely, frustrated but ambitious. Well, we're going to unpack this today. We're going to talk about what does that feedback mean? We're going to get into all the things you need to think about to address this situation and what you need to learn and understand about your organization in order to combat that. We're also going to go through all the steps you need to take as far as who you need to connect with and what information you need to seek out so that then you know how to play your chessboard. It's all about how do I get visibility today on this episode of The Trill MBA Show. All right, guys, listen, there's a couple baseline things that you need to understand if you're in this situation. So the situation is everything is good. I've been working hard. I put my head down. I'm busting my butt. I'm getting shit done. I'm doing the damn thing. And my performance reviews show that. But when it comes to my movement, climbing the ladder, getting to that next role within this organization, I'm always told, oh, you need to be more visible or one that you'll hear a lot in the finance industry and in banking is that, well, you need a bigger platform. Just know that part of this feedback is bullshit because at face value, what does visibility mean? Like, you being a black woman in this space already means that there's a hyper visibility about just your existence, especially if you're in a white or male or white male dominated industry and most people do not look like you. And the reality is in corporate spaces, most people are not going to look like you. And that's okay because you can turn that into your superpower if you enact a plan, right? So the first thing that you need to think about, ambitious, I'm going to call you ambitious, is you need to understand your chessboard, meaning you need to understand what 
the company culture is really like, like what is really happening in your company's culture. And a lot of times that's really hard to discern. And so you got to do some due diligence and do some research. And I think what's hard for many of us is this idea that we have to step outside of ourselves to do this. It is very hard to see all what's going on around you and to like see it kind of like beautiful mind or the queen's gambit, how she would see the chest moves in the air. Like you kind of have to put yourself in that state where you're kind of outside of yourself and you're looking at everybody else. So one thing, if you work in an office, one thing I want you to do Or even if you're on Zoom, I want you in a meeting to just really sit and listen and pay attention and watch. A lot of times when we're working, we're so focused on what we have to get done. We're not paying attention to the other pieces on your chessboard. They're your coworkers. And we're not paying attention to what they're saying and what they're doing with context. We are simply listening for the information we either need or the information we need to tell them in order to do the job. And so with this, what I'm telling you that you need to do first in this assessment of your organization is that you need to get outside of that mode of thinking and you need to start thinking, who are these people that I work with? Let me listen to them. Let me pay attention to the words they use and how they use them. Let me start to pay attention to what motivates them. Let me start to understand them as humans. Because at the end of the day, human beings have like 16 different characteristic traits to our personalities. And we're like a three or four combinations of the 16 at any given situation which means that human behavior is highly predictable. If you understand the situation and the pressure or intensity or what have you, certain personalities will respond and act in certain ways under certain types of pressure. The cool thing is the workplace is always a specific type of pressure. So that even reduces like, well, how are these people going to act in this stimuli of work? And you can start to pay attention to how they act and how they respond, how they act in meetings. You start to pay attention to, well, who do people really listen to? Whose words carry weight, even if they are not the CEO or they're not the VP or in the C-suite or what have you, there are people who are highly influential in your organization. You need to take the time out to look at all the people and start to determine who are the influencers in your company, who are the influencers on your team, who has your boss's ear, who does your boss pay the most attention to? Who pays attention to your boss? Does your boss have the juice? These are all questions you need to ask and you can discern these answers if you pay attention to how everybody behaves and acts in the workplace. But that takes a very conscious effort because (laughs) we're not at work to do psychoanalysis of people. We're at work to deliver our deliverables. But if you want to solve the problem that you have ambitious about visibility, then you need to pay attention to your coworkers because no matter what the process is to get promoted, no matter what they tell you, at the end of the day, there are one to two people that have the decision to promote you or not. There are one to two people. So it's either one person that has the final final say or there's like two people that need to collaborate and both of them have to agree. Or there are some companies where the hiring manager or the senior leader has the final say, but they are going to go along with a 
group of probably your manager's peers, that happens too. You need to understand this. So step one, come out of yourself, start assessing and paying attention to what's going on around you. When we come back from the break, I am going to break down the next two steps that you need to do in order to succeed and turn your great positive work accolades into actual movement towards promotion when we come back. Hey guys, Felicia here. I'm so glad you decided to join us today. Listen, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go to trillmba.com slash freebies so that you can go and find all of the free tools that I have for you that you can help drive your career and get these promotions. I need you to get paid. I need you to get your money. Okay, so go to trillmba.com slash freebies and you can sign up. And as soon as you give me a little email, that's all you got to do. And I don't really be emailing a bunch, so you don't have to worry about that. But you will be taken to a page and I have some video content there. I have some guides that I've made and I am working to even create more of these tools to help you on your way to your career destination where you want to go because you get to decide. So trillmba.com slash freebies and let's get back to the show. All right, we're back from the break. So guys, the first thing you need to do, you gotta wake up and pay attention. I love Sister Act 2. Anyway, wake up and pay attention. Look around. Get outside of yourself. The next thing you need to do is when you're talking to your manager um, and they say, you need to be more visible. You need to ask, what does visibility mean to you? What does visibility mean in this organization? Can you help me? So you want to ask for help. And regardless of whether your manager has the juice or not, they actually need to help you. Okay. They can't just give you feedback and then say, good luck. No. And when I say ask for help again, we're not asking for like help because you're not competent. So I want you to let that idea go. You are actually asking for advice and counsel. And if you don't want to use the word help, say this, hey, I need your advice and counsel. Sounds so professional, doesn't it? It's great. It's still help. So when you go to your manager and you say, hey, I need your advice and counsel. You mentioned in my performance review that I need to be more visible. And I've been working on a plan to be more visible, but I want to make sure that you and I have the same understanding of that I'm on your page. I'm on the same page as you around what that means. Can you give me an example of someone who you know has the level of visibility you think I need? Can you help me identify people that I need to build better relationships with? Can you tell me what does visibility mean in this organization for you? And what do you believe the outcome of this visibility would be, would look like? Like, how will I know the results that I've gained this visibility, right? And listen, and just take in whatever they say. And nine times out of 10, they're going to tell you some bullshit because this whole thing is bullshit. Let's be very clear. This whole thing, (laughs) (laughs) is bullshit. You actually don't need to be more visible. What you need to do is build more relationships in the organization. Anytime you get this more visibility, it just means you don't have influence in the organization. You don't have enough influence to get the promotion you need. So ask your manager, start with your manager. 
And whether your manager has influence in the organization or not, they should be able to discern the answers to your questions because they work at the company. And at some point they got promoted, most likely, because they're your manager, they're a people manager in the organization, or they see how other people, their peers are getting promoted. They're in the calibration rooms. They have information. You need to mine for that information by asking for advice and counsel. Now, the next thing I need you to do is I need you to make friends with your HR business partner. What? Felicia, go to HR? Yes, go to HR. (laughs) Listen, I'm not sending you to HR to complain. Again, I've told you guys, if you listen to this show, you have heard this. We only go to HR strategically and to tell them how happy we are and to get information from them. And the beautiful thing about this, think about it. Again, this ha- you have to get outside of yourself. Your HR business partner They are so sick and tired of people complaining to them. All day long, people complain to them, right? So you're coming to them and you're like, hey, Cindy, I'm hoping to grab coffee with you. Let's grab coffee. You know, I just have a couple of questions. I know you can give me some advice and some counsel. Um, I really love it here. I'm looking to grow my career here. And I'm just hoping you can help me understand like, how this place works a little bit better and how it ticks. What? Wait, you want to get coffee with me? You want to be happy with me? You want to not complain about shit? You like working here? Yes, absolutely. Anything you want. You are a breath of fresh air, girl. Yes. If you're virtual, schedule 30 minutes and say, hey, I just want to schedule a coffee chat. Like, I hope you grab coffee, tea or whatever. I'm going to grab mine and I just need your advice and counsel. I'm, I want to grow my career here. I'm really excited to be here. And I just want to get some information from you because I know you can help me. You know. So you got to understand, when you ask people to help you, it especially when they can, it endears them to you. Like they are so happy to help you. They want to help you. Okay. So do not be afraid to ask for help from your HR business partner in this way. Remember, no complaining. We're not complaining. We're not, I, I want to get promoted and I just don't know how. No, that's not the conversation. When you talk to the HR business partner, you say, you know what? I really love me here and my boss is so cool and I had this great performance review and I'm so excited. I'm hoping you can help me do some career mapping because like I really want to stay here for as long as I can. Like I know people job hop and all that stuff and you, you know, you got to think about your career, but I want to think about my career here. So I really need your advice and counsel on career mapping. Child, let me tell you, HR people, majority of them would love this because the majority of the time they get, I want to be promoted and I can't get promoted and I have really good career. I'm doing better than blah, 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 blah. You and everybody else, girl, I don't know what to tell you. But if you say, can you help me career map? And I want to bounce some ideas off you. Girl, you in there. So that's how you want to go and set up this meeting. And then you want to listen. So the thing you want to ask them is, what is the policy on, you know, how promotion happens and how people move into new roles and grow in the organization? So our team calibrates. And then is it the manager that signs off? Is it my manager's manager? Like, how does it work? They're going to spill all the tea, girl. You just sit there and you listen, okay? You just take notes and be like, oh my God, thanks. That's so helpful. I wish I had known. I didn't even think about that. Oh my goodness. And they could tell you a myriad of things. Just listen and be happy, okay? And get the information. Then the next thing you want to ask them, you want to say, well, do you sit in on calibrations? And are they, if they don't offer that up, and they might, 
And most likely the HR business partner is sitting in on calibrations. Okay. And then you can say, well, if you can share, and I know you may not be able to, but is there any talk tracks on me that I need to be aware of? You know, I'm really working on my self-awareness. I really want to understand the narrative that I have in the organization. I think it's important to understand my reputation. Child. So they either going to do one of three things because this is human behavior. That person's either going to be like, oh my God, you're amazing. And everybody has great things to say about you and blah, blah, blah. That's what you should hear if you have great performance evaluations. And if that, if they say that and everything's positive and they're happy about it, then you say, so is there any critical feedback you've heard on me that I should think through or be aware of? Because I, yeah, my boss says I do great too. I have these great performance reviews. And then maybe they'll tell you the unspoken thing, you know, and, and you, and give them a safe, this is a safe space. This is between us. I'm, I really just, you know, anything to help me grow, right? All feedback is a gift and I don't take anything to heart. I just, I just want to learn. Give them room to tell you the critical feedback if there's any. Or they're going to tell you like, actually, and then they're going to tell you the truth and they're going to give you the critical feedback that you're needing so you understand what the organization thinks about you. Or they're going to be uncomfortable and they're not going to want to share. They're going to get high. Oh my God. Well, I mean, you know, like your calibration was good. And like, you'll be able to tell like, but there's something they're not saying and they go high pitched on you. They learn and that's okay. Let them live, let them live. But just know now, you know, like, Oh, there's something here and I need to pay attention, better attention. Right. But there's some tales there. If you just watch for the behavior, you just have to watch. Right. Okay. So after you talk to HR and you get some of that information, the next thing I need you to do is go to your manager and ask them to give you anonymized 360 feedback if you already haven't gotten this. And what you want to do is try to get some verbatims and you want to get it from all levels. People, if you're mid-level, you may manage some people, you may manage some cross-functional teams. So What do your cross-functional partners think about you working with you day to day? What are some senior leaders that maybe they've had some interactions with you? What are their impressions? Like you want to find out what those verbatims are because that's your narrative. Your narrative is what people perceive of you. And the great thing is you can drive that perception. But first, you have to understand what's your baseline. If you haven't been consciously working to drive your narrative in the organization, you have to get what the 360 is, and that's your baseline. And then you can start crafting language and phrasing, and you just repeat those things over and over. If you feel like a broken record, you're doing it right. But you just repeat those things as you talk in conversations with, you know, I really love working here. I'm excited about growing my career here. If people think, oh, she's a flight risk, like if you find out they think you're a flight risk or you find out nobody knows that you want to grow your career here, that you want to be promoted. People don't know that. They think you're happy in your little worker B role. Then you start saying things like, oh, my God, I love you here. I love my job and I, I love this organization. I can't wait to grow my career here. And you just say that all the time. Don't say you want to get promoted. Don't say the P word. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't say the P word. But I want to grow my career here. I love it here. Yay. And then once you get that 360, you can start working on what are these phrases that you're going to repeat all the time that then people start repeating. And once you then do this check in again and people are repeating the phrases that you say, boom, you got them. That's how you know you got them. And understand people thinking you love it there, that's going to help you get promoted because people want to promote the people who like being at the company. Why? Why? Because a lot of people, they may not say it, but everything about them says they hate their job. They hate working. They hate it here. They, they're they just here for a check. They're stuck. They got kids. They got responsibilities. Um, they need this paycheck. And that's why they're there which is 95.99% of everybody. But if you can become that outlier, 
that helps you gain visibility. <laughs> it's just now after you've gone to HR, you talk to your manager, ask your manager for help, ask HR for help. You've gotten 360 feedback. You understand what your baseline talk track is. The last big step is implementing your relationship building plan. And we're going to discuss that. And I'm going to break that down, what you need to do. I've talked about it in other episodes about relationship while building, but we're going to talk about how you do and why you do. And I'm going to give you a little more context when we get back from the break. Hey guys, listen, I'm telling y'all, this, not easy. So the thing that I need your help with, and I'm asking you to help me, is I need you to share this episode. I need you to share other episodes. I need you to subscribe. We are working really hard to bring you relative, relatable, real-time content. And I'm working on creating more content to help you get paid and get promoted, to help you not just survive at work, but to thrive at work. But in order to do that, I need your help. So if this podcast has ever helped you in any way, I need you to tell other people about it. Right now, we have about 270 subscribers. I really want to get to 500 subscribers before the end of October. If you just tell people to come to YouTube and subscribe, I would be forever grateful, one. And two, you have helped somebody and we are all better for it. So help me help you, help me help you. (laughs) I really appreciate you for riding with me. I'm committed because I believe in this mission. I know that you can survive at work. Okay, you can. And not only survive, but thrive at work. And it doesn't have to be so hard. It really doesn't. You just have to work and think smarter. That's it. So subscribe, like, share, and I thank you. Now, let's go wrap up the show. All right. So the last thing after you know your narrative and you know what they're saying and now you know what you need to massage that into and your boss, you've had this conversation, you've asked them for the people that you need to connect with for this visibility and all that. You talk to HR. They've told you how the process works on how to get promoted. Now you can take all this information and craft your relationship wall plan, building your relationship wall. So here's the thing. I think ambitious that your boss is shitty. I'm just going to put that out there. Think your boss is shitty. You know why? Because you're giving me feedback, but you're not helping me proactively When this type of feedback, you should proactively be helping me. And so I'm assuming, ambitious, that your boss is not proactively helping you. And so what that means is, is that your boss is shitty. (laughs) That's what it means. I don't make the rules. So here's what I'm worried about. My spirit is telling me is that you're going to start reaching out and building these relationships. And because your performance is great and people love great performers in the organization. So once you start telling people, oh, I worked on this and this is a result I got. And then I'm so excited about this. And I just wanted to share this with you. I'd love to get your advice and counsel on what I should do. When you start having these coffee chats with the influencers, and they start thinking you're so wonderful and all this, and that starts coming back to your manager, then your manager's going to start feeling away. Yeah. I don't know why this happens, but it does. But you're prepared. Okay. And so how you combat that is as you are building this plan where you identify like three key people that have influence over the promotions process that the HR person told you about and you start working to gain visibility with them. And how you do that is pay attention, 
What are they working on? What do they care about? How is what you're working on tied to what they care about? And then that's what you go talk to them about and you go get their advice and counsel on your work. You ask them about them and you're curious and you you just want to meet up with them and you tell them like, hey, I was talking to my manager and she said I had an opportunity to expand my network internally at the organization and um, she identified you as a person that may be interested in some of the work I'm working on and maybe could really be a thought leader and a thought partner for me as I'm working on this XYZ project right now and schedule time. I don't care what level they're at. If you say that, if you do that, they're going to meet with you because you're like, oh, you're working on something. I need to know something. I need to know information. Leaders love information. The more information, the more power I can control over my board. So if you're offering information and you're asking them for help through advice and counsel, it's very hard to turn down. I don't care who you look like, who you are. I'm going to want to talk to you. Okay? Okay. So when you meet with them, though, remember this. Schedule time to meet with them. Work to do it over. Coffee, lunch, something very human. So it humanizes you. And then when you're talking to them, two points you need to make. One, you need to listen more than you talk and you need to ask them questions about them, get them talking about them, let them talk about them. People, when they talk about themselves to you, that endears you to them. It's counterintuitive, but this is human behavior. The other thing you need to do is make sure that you talk well about your boss. I don't care how much you hate this person. I don't care how horrible they are, (laughs) like truly horrible. And I don't care if they have a bad reputation in the company. They have a bad reputation. And you say, you know, I know Jill, some people might have a perception of her, but actually she's been great to me. And she's done this, 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 and then point out good things because everybody has something good you can talk about them about. So point out the good thing about her or him your manager, make sure you talk that up. Here's why you need to edify your manager, especially once you understand how the room works and you know your manager is going to be in the room. Here's what you're doing. So imagine calibration. Your manager's in the room. This influential person's in that room. Other people are in the room. They're talking about talent. Your name comes up in the conversation and your manager says something shitty. Did your manager shit me? The people you've connected with who are in that room and you've sung your manager's praises to them, they're going to feel immediately a way about your manager because all you've ever done was talk well about your manager. And now your manager's talking shit about you in this calibration. You're not even there to defend yourself. So now these people already have a sense of who you are and what's going on with you. And they've had good interactions with you. And according to how loud they are or the chess game that they're playing, one of them is probably going to speak up and say, well, actually, I met with Felicia And I had this conversation with her and she was explaining her project. And I thought that she showed executive presence and I thought she was good and blah, 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 blah. And now your manager looks stupid, which is going to make your manager mad. And they're going to start acting a fool. But we already knew this. We planned for this already. You just keep your cool, level headed, be happy, be excited. Keep killing it in the performance part and getting your work done and doing, you know, knocking shit out the park. Doesn't mean you have to work extra. Just do your solid job that you've done. I'm telling you, you'll be amazed at how your manager will have to turn around and be nice to you begrudgingly and be a better person because now they realize, oh, shit, I look bad. I got to fix that. Or if they double down, they're going to get pushed out of the organization. Either way, you win. So that's why it never it never helps you to complain at work. It never helps you to complain about anything. How you combat things is you talk positively about whatever situation and set a positive expectation. And then subconsciously people try to rise to meet that 
expectation, that vibration that you're putting out there. Like they want to get on board. But when you complain to get change at the end, you usually get pushed out. It doesn't work out for you. So it's best to use the positivity and the energy to get where you're trying to go through the people. Because at the end of the day, you're dealing with all these people. There's a chessboard and how you move them is with your energy, the energy you bring to the interactions with them. That's how you get them to move. So remember that. But in order to do all of this, you got to get out your own head. Can't be in your own head about it. You have to really pay attention to the board. If you pay attention to you and your workload and all this other stuff, you can't pay attention to the chessboard. And you can spend more time on this and less time on work. Like you can turn in your C because for most of us, we already know our C is their A. So it's fine. Get it done. You know, dot your I's and cross your T's on it. But do you need to like get that last 10 20% perfection. No, let that shit go and spend that energy building your relationships and understanding how it works on paper and then how it really works. Who's really in the room? Who really has the say? All those things. Your HR business partner can help you discern some of that stuff when you start having conversations and meeting with them regularly. And make sure you tell, like, come back and say, oh, hey, Beth, that's the HR business partner. Hey, Beth, I met with such and such and they had, they said this and it was just such a good meeting. Like, come back and tell that HR business partner all the good things. Love, I'm telling you, they hear so much crap all day. If you come and be a bright, happy light of their day, oh my God. So then that's the other thing. They're in the calibration too. So then now they know who you've met with that's in the room too. This is how you gain true actionable visibility. And sooner rather than later, if you execute all this properly, you'll be promoted. They'll promote you. The other thing before I let you guys go, you also have to be very clear on what is that next role? What what value do you want to bring in the next role to the organization? Does that next role exist? Is it a role that they need to create? And if you start having these conversations and being excited about how you want to add value and what you want to bring, and you understand your unique value proposition to the organization and you can articulate that, they'll make the role for you because you're going to make them money. Not only are you going to make them money, you're going to make them look good. It's a win-win. So frustrated, but ambitious. I hope that this episode helps you be less frustrated. I hope that this unlocks for you the things that you need to execute to gain visibility and the relationships that you need to work on building and putting that plan together and using all the people around you Um, to help you and that you'll ask for that help. It's really that simple. But that's like saying, eat less, exercise more. You still got to go and do it. And I know sometimes it's hard, especially when you're frustrated, to be happy and say, oh, I love it here. But it works, guys. So anyway, until next week, guys. Hopefully next week uh, we'll have a new episode. And uh, if you have questions, email us at ask at trillmba.com. If you want me to read your listener letter on the show and help you out with your workplace dilemma. Bye guys. Well, guys, that's a wrap on another great episode of the Career Management Podcast for Black Women. Yes, girl, this show is just for you. We're here to tell you how to play that chessboard at work, girl. So subscribe, comment, like, follow us on social media at Trill and BA Show. Listen, 
every time you tell one of your friends, you share this information, you share this podcast, it helps us to grow and make even more dope content just for you, unapologetically. That's why we're here. Now, if you are facing a workplace dilemma, such as a performance improvement plan, or you're not able to secure your promotion and raise that you have worked for and you have deserved, basically, if these people are play playing in your face, we are here to help. Go to trillmba.com slash coaching to schedule a one-time one-on-one call to workshop your specific dilemma with me or schedule a consult to get more information about the consulting packages that I do offer on a longer term basis. As always, you can reach out to us with your listener letters and your questions at trillmba.com. Until next time, guys, focus on your best possible outcome. Ask for help when you need it. Please, please, please ask for help. And as always, keep it true. I'll see y'all next week.